I started out very young with a love of drawing. You know, I remember distinctly I was in like first grade and I couldn't figure out why I knew what a lion looked like in my head, but I couldn't draw it on paper. So my mom got me a book, How to Draw Animals, and I just like copied every drawing in, in the book and, um, and just loved it. Uh, I grew up in Greenville, South Carolina, and at the time, they had the best permanent collection in the country or the world of Andrew Wyeth's work. And I was really, really impressed with uh, his work and his ability to, in just a few brush strokes, you know, render a rusty bucket full of water. I just thought it was magic. So, you know, I, I was really uh, inspired by him, and I went to classes there at the Greenville County Museum and then just followed it all through school. And it just never, I never grew out of it. I love that uh, schizophrenic nature of these paintings. Uh, before I was doing these, I was doing abstract painting for probably about 10 years. Um, and I was really wanting to do something else with the painting, something that was a little bit more of a storytelling process. So some of the paintings that have a little bit more of a narrative, even if those narratives are kind of vague you know, and non-linear. So I didn't know what they were going to look like. So for a couple of years, while I continued to do the abstract painting, I started writing down ideas. I started making sketches. And then what really um, helped me was when I got hold of Photoshop on my computer and I started playing with different images. And I love this, the uh, uh, disparate, um, you know, clashing images you know, I love this layering. And I've always been a big fan of, of great illustration, you know, comic book art, old, early, golden age animation. I love, I love the drawing quality, the color. So film, I'm a big fan of film. So some of my earlier paintings have some imagery from The Wizard of Oz and then some, there's a lot of film references in a lot of my paintings. So I got to take all these things that I love and, and throw them into this one soup and, and stir them about. So I have, um, I'm showing all my influences and all my loves on the same, same canvas. And I love this layered effect and, and how the patterning and the disparate imagery of this illustrative or photo based, how they play on each other and push each other forward and back. The film is, uh, in, in a vague way, has always interested me. But here in Atlanta, there has been a real boom in the feature film industry. And I had some friends that were working on films. So I have been freelancing for the better part of the past 20 years, doing decorative painting, murals, uh, plaster work, um, you know, prop styling for photo shoots, all these things, and, and still having to find some means of steady income to support my painting. And the film thing came up through a friend and I started talking to him about how you go about getting involved in that. Very quickly he introduced me to some people that hired me right away. I took my portfolio in and they said, well, we need to get you to join the union and, and um, if you do, we'll have a lot of steady work for you. We'll keep you busy for the next three months. And I've been, save for the time that I've been working on my paintings, I've been really busy doing that for the better part of the past year and a half. So that's how it started. And, and once I got into it, I found that I was um, pretty perfectly suited for it, having done all these other things in the past, working large scale on murals, uh, a familiarity with paint and materials, faux finishing, and uh, working quickly. And all these things were key to, to doing scenic work. So that's what I've been doing. I've been working as a scenic on um, three films and a TV show now. I will continue to paint. I think I'll continue to paint. Hopefully when I'm 85, 90, I'll be, I'll be painting. But having been involved in the film industry, as I have the past you know, two years, it's, it's sort of opened my eyes to other opportunities. And so I've started thinking in other ways. I've, I recently did my first video installation. And recently with a good friend of mine, Brett Falcon, who's a photographer in town, we collaborated on a music video for a New York artist, and hopefully that will be something that we would like to continue to do. So I would like to, on a smaller scale, 
get involved in some film myself. And in that way, you know, hopefully take, you know, the same aesthetic and ideas that I have had and honed it with the painting and just translate that to another medium. See if it translates and see how that could change what I'm doing. It's an inspirational thing, the cemetery. It, it is a reminder that, that this is temporal, you know, and so if I'm in the middle of something that is, seems uh, um, overwhelming or I'm, or I'm super tired or I'm getting burnt out on a project, it's like, you know, this is, this is life. That's death right outside the window. So it is sort of this, you know, not in a morbid way, but it is a very, um, it's, it's a good reminder that, that this, we're here, we're here now, we have this chance now, so, you know, create with it.